Guys, so I'm coming at you from my van today. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, all the appliances in my van, how much power they take. I'm going to tell you how I gauge that. And I'm also going to go over the um, battery system that I have set up. And um, if that solar panel up top, which is 150 watt, is that um, good enough to sustain the batteries down there, the 260 amp hour batteries, if I'm using my uh, appliances all day long. Is it good enough? So my name's Ryan Bell, and this is kind of the van, not kind of, it is the van, that I've been sleeping in for the last three and a half weeks now. You know, a lot of people online have been saying, oh, the, the solar panel, is that doing well for you? You know, I have 260 amp hour flooded lead acid batteries, and the uh, I only have one 150 watt panel up on top, and I watch movies and blast music and do that uh, on internet all day long, and um, I constantly have my air filter on. Uh, just about you know, I don't know. I have two computers too. I just you know playing video games. That uses a lot of battery and everything. Um, and the the question is, you know, is the solar panel is it keeping up with the battery? Let's take a look at this uh, 150 watt panel for energy. So you can see this is the 150 watt panel for energy on the outside. From the solar panel above, you see all these wires in the corner. I basically cut holes in the van and brought the wires down. And those go all the way down to this switch right here. This is the master solar panel switch this basically turns the panel on and off just so I don't have to always be taking in energy if I do that though there's no energy going to the battery at all the solar panel is the only thing that supplies power to the battery so what I have here is the wires connected to this switch and then they go straight into the solar panel in to this MPPT solar charge controller this is the Apever or Apever tracer this one's a 30 amp model next on the bottom i have the battery which is up underneath this i'll uh, remove this here in a second that's attached to the positive and negative battery terminals next i have the positive and negative load terminals which go from um, here's the negative terminals and there's the positive terminals these have the fuse uh, I mean, this is the fuse box right here, and you can see they're all connected, uh, to, and they go out to their um, proper destination. Which I'm just going to give you a list of the different appliances I'm running. I have two computers right here. One's being powered by the inverter, and the other one is direct uh, DC, um, because I bought a special adapter for that one. Uh, those use the most power by far of the entire van. They, uh, when this one's on, it's about three amps to do well, two to three amps. This one, uh, it could be anywhere from one to five amps. Um, based on if I'm playing video games, it uses like five to six amps actually. Um, and then just normal, like working on it, it could be like two amps. Um, over here, I have my air filter. It's the Bamet air filter. It filters in three different ways. Um, it uses 0.1 amps. So that thing, I just have it on all the time because it's not using any power really. Um, here, this is my internet. Um, this uses uh, 0.3 amps when I have it plugged in. It has its own battery. So um, I plug it in uh, down here with a little, um, you know, it's the same thing as a phone charger. I just, um, Android phone charger, I just plug it in like that. It uses 0.3 amps to charge it. Um, same as my phone when I'm charging my phone, 0.3 amps. Um, these speakers, uh, they when I have them on, it's using about one to two amps, uh, not too much, um, and that doesn't really matter how loud they are. Uh, it doesn't seem to matter at least um, with the amp draw. The lights, I have six of these all the way down. Uh, each one of those or well, all of them together uses 0.8 amps, nothing. I can keep those on all the time, it doesn't matter. Um, this fan, when I have the fan turned on, uh, it uses uh, 0.2 amps at its lowest setting. 
uh, in its mid setting, it uses about one to 1.5 amps, and on its highest setting, it uses about 2.8 amps. Uh, I don't ever want to turn it all the way up. I don't see a point to that, so I keep it about halfway to low. Uh, it just works, um, and that that uses a lot less power. Down below here, I have a. Uh, if you can kind of see it below, uh, behind there, it's the orange uh, thing. There's the that's the um, the pump. The pump. I think it uses about 1.5 amps. I don't really measure that because I don't. You hear how loud it is? Like, um, I only use it for seconds at a time, so it doesn't really take power away, in my opinion. If you're wondering how I get the um, readings for the batteries and everything, you can see right here, I'll turn on the backlight. Um, the first side right here is the solar panel, then I have the battery, and then there's the load. Um, so the battery, or the solar panel is taking in 2.2 .2 amps right now. The battery's charging at 2.3 amps and the load is taking away 0.8 amps. I don't know why this number can be larger than this and still be drawing power. Um, it's just very efficient what I have down there, the Ever solar charge controller. Um, I wanna, um, now when, when you're using this, you wanna pay attention to this top metal number. This is the voltage of the battery, the current voltage. Um, it's at 14.7 right now because it's being overcharged. Uh, you wanna overcharge at least once a day, by the way. Um, when it's overcharging, it's uh, helping melt the electrolyte uh, and get it back to uh, its form before it was um, used up. Uh, so that, that's why you want to do it each day. You don't want those crystals of electrolyte to harden. Um, so 14.7 uh, volts, that's overcharging. Now 100% uh, is right at 12.7 um, and above. Anything above that is 100%. Then um, 12.5, that's about 75%. 12.2, that's about 50%. Or at that point, you want to start trying to shut it off. Um, and 12.0 is empty. Now, um, to measure uh, the, the, like the voltage numbers, you want everything off. And you want it to stay off at least four hours um, before this uh, reading is accurate. Uh, when it's charging and when it's discharging, um, it's that's not an accurate number um, and I understand that waiting four hours is not uh, it's not you're not gonna do that like it's just something that's you know it's out of <laughs> stupid you're never gonna do that so um, what you, what you want to do just I don't know when, I, when my voltage uh, when I'm you know I'm just charging at night play on games and everything and um, when that reaches 12.0 that's when I start shutting it off because it's in actuality it's probably 12.4 um, or something around there. I just don't like going below 60 to 75 percent, you know, um, battery. So it's, it's good at that point. I just shut it off. Um, and that'll help keep things charged up a while. Now I told you I was going to take the panel off for the sake and show you the batteries. These are Crown batteries. These are CR-260s. Um, each one of them is 6 volts. Both of them are connected with this red wire right here, um, going from terminal to terminal. Um, so that makes 12 volts in total. Uh, there's the negative that comes back over, and then there's the positive. Everything's running out the side right here. Um, I also, if you see this tube, this uh, large tube that's running across the batteries right there, this is a flooded lead acid battery so that um, I need to fill the water inside of them every month or so when it gets low. Um, so I have that tube running across. So I never actually do have to take this panel off like I just showed you to do that. What happens is the tube is running across there. It comes down over here and below here. So I have this, I just connect the other end of it which is up underneath the bed right now. I have uh, this. All I have to do is, um, you know, I hook this side up to it and then I put this side into that distilled water bottle and then I just squeeze it until the, uh, you know, it's all, it's all full and I can't squeeze it anymore. The, uh, the bulb will harden up and not let me squeeze any more into it if it's full. So that's basically the battery. I didn't show you, and I don't think I could have shown you when this thing was open, but I'll post a little 
bit of pictures on it on the screen right now. Um, behind the battery right here, um, to the side of the van, I cut a little hole in the metal and vented the battery to the exterior. That's because there are off gases that uh, come off the battery uh, when it's charging and discharging and everything, and you don't want to breathe those in. So it, uh, so the the vent uh, kind of puts those to the outside of the van and not to the inside to where it would hurt me overnight or you know just while being inside of here. So guys if you like this video just go ahead and hit that subscribe button um, and just to answer that original question that I asked in the beginning is the solar panel good enough? The answer is yes. Uh, that one, one 150 watt solar Renogy panel is definitely good enough to power these 260 amp hour batteries and I am using them all day long. So I mean, I'm good. I don't have to connect another solar panel. I don't have to connect the batteries to the alternator up front. It's just that one solar panel that's doing it all. Um, and it's working very well. Bye guys.